Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today we're talking about bass drum lifts. What are they, what are they for, sound-wise in particular. Now we've talked about bass drum lifts a lot in the past. Um, we've talked about them with regards particularly to smaller drums and like making sure that you're hitting the center of the head if that's the tone that you're after, things like that. The question we're after today is more of a holistic kind of thing. It's the sound of the drum itself. Is the drum different when it's elevated and not clipped to the pedal or rather with the pedal clipped to it? Thanks so much to Synced for sponsoring today's episode. If you're not familiar, it is a app that is a sort of combination like metronome, sequencer. It does so much stuff. And we've all had a regular metronome in our lives that does quarters, eighths, maybe sixteenths, maybe triplets. This is an app that will do any division that you can think of from a whole note to 30 second notes, but not just twos and threes. You can do quintuplets, septuplets. You can divide it by beat. You can divide it by bar. You can take a beat out. You can have every beat be different. It is about as sophisticated as it gets, and anything that you would ever have to play in your life, you can program that rhythm into this metronome. Hit up the link in the description below to learn more and download the app today. If you have a drum sitting literally on the floor, you're driving some of the resonance into the floor, and having it up kind of padded and sort of elevated in a way, it's almost like a suspension mount in a way, and we were just kind of curious if this actually really changes the character of the drum, particularly when you're dealing with a minimally muffled, super resonant kind of sound. Today we're gonna do it on a 22 with a ported front head and we're also gonna do it on an 18 with full heads on both sides. Now there are drums that have a lifting system built into them, some 16s, things like that. What we're using today is this little guy here, the Dixon bass drum lift. It's very small, very simple, and all it is is a thing that goes underneath your drum and then you clamp your pedal to this end of it, basically. So we're completely divesting the clamping business from the drum and onto this, and the drum is allowed to just sit on this and resonate on its own. So first off, we're gonna do the 22. We're gonna do this sort of in a specific order, which is gonna be that we're gonna do the drum by itself, then we're gonna lift the drum, and I'm going to extend the beater just a little bit so that we're hitting the same spot on the head, so that hopefully what we're hearing is not that we're now hitting the center of the drum. This is gonna affect the overall weight and feel of the pedal, so there's gonna be some change just from that, and then we're gonna round back to the same beater height, so we'll be striking the center of the head instead of offset, and see if that makes a difference.
there's three different sounds going on here, and to my ear, the first two are almost indistinguishable. And again, what we did was we started with normal beater height for me with the drum on the floor. Then we raised the drum up with the lift, extended the beater so that it was hitting the same spot on the drum as it was in the first place. Those two sound virtually identical to me. The third one is lowering the beater back down to where it was in the first place, which is actually changing the strike zone on the drum so that it's closer to the center, almost actually in the center. And I do hear a pronounced boost in the low end there. So at least with the 22, lifting it doesn't seem to inherently change the resonance of the drum but hitting the drum in the center rather than offset is definitely giving us a little bit more oomph out of the low end. Now moving on to the 18 with full heads. We went ahead and just did two versions of this since the first two of that last one were basically identical. We're gonna do it on the ground and then we're gonna raise it up but leave the beater shaft length the same in both examples. Now this drum seems to be having an even more dramatic change from the first to the second as far as my ears go. I'm hearing a lot more sustain and tone in the second one. Based on what happened with the 22, I feel like it's reasonable to say that moving the strike zone closer to the center of the drum is what's causing that activation of the low end and really getting the shell moving more so than that it's just off of the ground. However, this does bring to mind uh, the obvious benefits of a lift for a smaller drum, which is that with a normal pedal setup, you can hit it closer to center, which is going to activate just a lot more tone and low end out of that instrument, whether it's an 18, a 16, um, maybe a 20 in some cases, depending on the way you set your pedal up. The reason that this happens with little drums is because if you are getting the beater shaft short enough to hit somewhere near the normal strike zone of a larger drum, you're actually getting quite a bit of the beater shaft sticking out of the bottom end of the mounting bracket on the pedal, which means that a, like the play of the pedal is going to feel weird because you're not getting the normal length and thus like the, the, the feel of the lever is different. But also you could potentially damage your head when the when the beater is going back and forth and the bottom part of the shaft is sticking out. I have seen people, you know, shorten their beater shafts and things for this type of situation. But I think for me, lifting the drum up makes it a lot more sense. So it feels to me right now like the bottom line is that we're not getting an inherent difference in the sound of the drum purely from lifting it up the way that you would get a real fundamental difference with like a rims mount or something on a rack tom. But with a smaller drum, moving the strike zone that your pedal hits when it's set up comfortably for you in this manner does actually change the behavior of the drum quite a bit. If you'd like a little more context for all these sounds, we're gonna have a bunch more playing examples added to the Patreon later in the week. So if you're interested in checking that out, head down through the link below the video and check out the levels, check out the opportunities there. It's really helping us continue to do this. Um, and there's lots of fun information and stories and things on there as well. And thanks again to Synced for sponsoring today's episode. If you haven't checked out the app, download it. I use it all the time. We use it all the time here. Um, it's just about as good as it gets for that type of thing.